Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with New Year's Baby Porchetta. That's right, for centuries, pork has been served on New Year's to symbolize progress and prosperity. And there's a very good reason for that. And that would be the fact that pigs never move backwards. It's true, pigs are always rooting forward and perpetually moving forward. You know, like time. Plus, they're also very delicious. So this works on several levels. And what we need to do to start what's basically a miniaturized porchetta recipe is to create our garlic herb spice rub, which I will be doing in my olive wood mortar. And we'll begin by crushing some whole fennel seeds. So we will toss those in and give them a brief pounding. And that's not because you can't eat these whole. You can and do every time you eat Italian sausage. But by crushing these a little bit first, we really release all those beautiful flavors from the fennel seed. Which, by the way, if you're doing this, will smell amazing. So we'll work those over for about a minute before adding the rest of the ingredients, which includes a whole bunch of sliced garlic, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. And then we're also going to need some herb. And I'm doing two. I'm doing some sage leaves, which I've sliced up, as well as some freshly chopped rosemary. We will also want a little bit of citrus zest. As you can see, I'm going with lemon. But orange or a combination of both would also be nice. And then let's go ahead and finish this off with some chili flakes. As well as, of course, some kosher salt. And once we have all that together, what we'll do is crush this for about a minute or two to form basically a coarse paste. So, of course, this has been edited. It's going to take you a couple minutes. But we'll want to smoosh and smash that until we have something that looks about like this. At which point, we'll finish this off with a splash of olive oil. And once that's been drizzled in, we'll grind that for another minute at which point our garlic herb spice paste should be done. And I really do love everything about using a mortar for this step, except they're really hard to film because you can't really see what's going on in there. But good news, you're going to get a great look at that texture when we spread it over our pork, which is going to be the next step, as soon as we prep our pork tenderloin. And there it is. What I have here is a one pound fully trimmed pork tenderloin, which is how I buy mine. And yours is probably going to come in a similar condition. And other than possibly trimming off a little bit of silver skin, it should be pretty much ready to go. And the only thing we're going to do to prep this for our spice rub is to cut a pocket with a thin sharp knife right down the center about 75% of the way through. But I don't like to do the entire length. Okay, we want to leave the ends sans gash. So we'll leave about an inch on either end uncut. And like I said, we'll cut about 75% of the way through to form a pocket as shown. So that is looking just about perfect right there. Although I really should probably turn that so it's easier to work with. And then what we'll do is transfer in about a tablespoon of our rub and spread that into our newly formed pocket. Oh, and by the way, I should mention, if these particular rub ingredients don't turn you on, this video is really more of a technique and will pretty much work no matter what you use in this. All right, you are after all the Bob Dylan of your filling. So feel free to adapt. And then what we'll do once we spread about a tablespoon inside is close that back up and transfer the rest over the top. And we'll go ahead and spread that as evenly as we can on both sides. And please, you're going to want to use your hands here, as no other tool will work as well. And then what we're going to do once we have all our garlic and spice mixture spread over evenly, is wrap this in strips of bacon. So we'll start at the end, and we'll wrap this in strips of bacon, ideally starting and ending with a seam underneath the loin, which hopefully is going to help keep them in place. Okay, so a real porchetta is made with pork loin wrapped in pork belly. So here to miniaturize it, we're going with the much smaller pork tenderloin, and then instead of wrapping with the whole belly, we'll simply wrap in these strips of bacon, which in case you didn't know is sliced pork belly. And as far as starting and ending with the seams on the bottom, that worked great for the first two. But with this third one, because the piece was a little smaller and the pork loin was a little thicker, my strip ended on top. So what I decided to do was simply trap it by placing another one over the top, which totally worked to keep it in place. But as you'll see later, where we doubled up that bacon, it didn't quite cook as much as I wanted. But anyway, we'll get into that later. So we'll go ahead and cover our tenderloin with bacon strips from one end to the other. Like I said, somehow ending up with the seams on the bottom. And then once that's set, I'm pretty sure we could cook it right away if we had to. But what I'm highly suggesting is wrapping it up and popping it in the fridge for about an hour to chill it thoroughly and to give it time for those flavors to mingle. Plus, since this was the first time I'd tried this miniature version, I was worried about the loin inside overcooking by the time the bacon cooked on the outside. So I thought chilling it would help that situation, since the inside would be a little colder and take a little longer to cook. But anyway, I did wrap mine up and pop in the fridge for about 60 minutes, at which point we are ready to roast. And what we'll want to do is unwrap that and transfer it onto a very lightly oiled foil lined baking sheet. Okay, I'm using a half pan, but a full sheet pan will work beautifully. And then what we'll do once our baby porchetta has been successfully panned up, 
is transfer that into the center of a very hot 450 degree oven for about 25 minutes or so, or until our probe reads 134. At which point it should look something like this. And no, 134 internal temp is not cooked enough. But as this sits and rests for at least 10 minutes or so, that internal temp is gonna to climb to somewhere between 140 and 145, which is absolutely perfect. And if you don't believe me, wait until we slice this open. So I definitely let mine sit and rest for about 10 minutes. And instead of just staring at it doing nothing, I decide to grab my blowtorch and give that outside surface a little bit extra color. Okay, while this is a brilliant technique for creating juicy, flavorful pork tenderloin, it's not necessarily a brilliant technique for creating gorgeous bacon. Okay, if we waited for that bacon to crisp up, our pork inside would be way, way overcooked. So I did cheat a little bit here. But as they say, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. And then once our baby porchetta has rested at least 10 minutes, we are able to slice in and see how we did. And how did we do? Check it out. That is about as perfect as you could hope to cook a pork tenderloin. Plus, it's wrapped with bacon. So that just came out amazingly well. And I really do want a piece right now. But I don't want to wreck a big piece. I want to save those for the picture. So let me try a little end cut here. Which was nothing short of insanely delicious and shockingly porchetta-like. So I went ahead and sliced up a proper portion and served it with a little Italian white bean ragu. And then I took way too many pictures and the meat got cold. But I ate it anyway and enjoyed every not hot but incredible bite. And besides the gorgeous appearance and flavor, this was so incredibly tender, as you can tell since I'm cutting it with a fork with little or no effort. And yes, in case you're wondering, you can deglaze a foil line pan. I just splashed a little water on it while it was still hot and gave it a little stir and spooned it over. So if you want, you could just do some natural pan juices or something like a salsa verde or an aioli or nothing, since this really is so incredibly flavorful and really doesn't need much. But anyway, that's it, my New Year's baby porchetta. For a first attempt, I just loved how this came out. Although next time I think I will experiment trying to get that bacon cooked a little more. Most of it was fine, but the places where it overlapped was a little undercooked. So as cooks, even though we're happy with how something came out, we should always be looking for ways to improve it. Okay, the key is to always try to be happy, but never satisfied. In fact, I think I'm gonna make that my New Year's resolution, to be happy yet not satisfied in 2017. Hey, that's better than clean out the garage. But anyway, let me finish up by wishing you all a very happy and healthy new year, filled with progress and prosperity, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.